Today we are going to talk about strut and more than you ever wanted to know about strut. So strut or otherwise colloquially called a million things. Actually, I did a thing like a few years ago on Instagram where I held one of these up and I just said, what do you call this? We got Kindorf, strut, strut channel, channel, beeline, Kindo. I kind of like that one. It's like short, the short version of Kindorf. We've got Una, or Uni, I guess they would call it, Unistrut, Cantrus, never heard that one before. That's gotta be a brand name. Uh, C channel, slotted strut, slotted Cantrus, Versa bar, train track, anchor rail, strut rail, and G strut. What do you call this, please? Leave some comments below. I'm just curious to see like where you're from and what you call it. I think it'll blow a lot of people's minds when they look down below and they see just what people call it. It's funny. Anyways, okay, so ABB sent me all this stuff and I wanted to at least just talk about a lot of different options. I by no means have even a tenth of the amount of different mounting options and straps and things that you can put these together with, but I figured I could just drop some knowledge on you about the differences and variations because we use this stuff all day long. So first and foremost, strut is not an electrical material. It is a framing system. Now it is listed to be able to be used as a support means for securing and supporting uh, conduits and electrical products. So it is listed for that purpose, but we're not the only trade that uses this stuff. It's used for, you know, HVAC guys. They'll like mount uh, an air handler and they'll hang it down from a ceiling because they've got hard duct coming in one side. So they got to get it at a certain level and it's got to hang from a ceiling. So they use it. It can be used for all kinds of different things. So um, we're gonna talk about just it as a framing structure and then putting it all together and mounting, or, you know, like, to, like completing it as a system and then mounting some electrical stuff to it. Um, but to start out, you'll notice there's some variations in the kinds of strut. So the first one, we've got thin strut. Thin strut, we're typically talking seven eighths thick. We're looking at a uh, inch and seven eighths center to center. It actually kind of looks like it's two inches. But if you look in their literature, it's inch and seven eighths. And if you keep following the tape all the way down, you're going to shore up a little bit in between each hole if, you, if you're thinking it's two inches. So it's actually an inch and seven eighths um, hole to hole. Now, the difference with that is if you look at Kindorf, this is Kindorf. Kindorf is punched. This is considered slotted strut, and this is considered punched. So with Kindorf, you've got different spacings. So these are all going to be an inch and a half from right here to right here. We've got an inch and a half center to center. So with Kindorf, you have a whole bunch of these little holes that are spaced closer together, which also means that you need to have Kindorf material because the actual mounting material to make sure that all the bolts match up with them, um, those materials have to mate up. So if you're using slotted, there's specific hardware that has certain spacings on it. And if you're using Kindorf, they have some as well that match those spacings. The other thing too is the thickness of this strut is an inch and five eighths. It doesn't matter if it's the thick stuff like this, you're looking at an inch and five eighths for the width. With Kindorf, you're looking at an inch and a half for the width. So it does change a little bit. Um, the, the thickness of it is different too. So if you look at the thickness of slotted strut, you've got a seven eighths thickness. And on here, you've got three quarter inch uh, thickness for the Kindorf. So they are a little bit different. If you were to stack them side by side, you can notice, yeah, this is an inch and a half and this is an inch and five eighths. So it just depends like what people are used to, what you're trying to build, what you're going for. The other thing to note with strut is that you have different gauges of thickness of steel. So with this, we've got an A1200 and this is a B1400. So 1200 just means it's 12 gauge. You can see that a little bit more clearly here, this thicker 12 gauge and this is 14 gauge. So it just kind of depends like, what are you building? Do you need to have something that's a stout, you know, thicker gauge, or can you deal with something that's a little bit um, skinnier just because you're not putting that much weight on it, but you just need some kind of mounting structure. Both of them are okay. Um, the next thing you might notice is right here, I've got this back to back. So this is a, a double strut or back to back strut. And with ABBs specifically, they rivet theirs together. So you'll see all these rivets down that whole entire line. And that's because they don't like tack welding because when you start tack welding on metal, if there's a protective coating, like we have a, a zinc galvanized coating on this material, it actually burns away that zinc and it can expose the underlying steel to things like rust and you know other environmental things. Uh, so a lot of other brands do that tack welding because it's cheap and fast, but they want something that is profoundly strong and doesn't have any damage to it. So they put these rivets in it. Um, you can get it more than just double back to back strut. You can actually get triple strut. And so what that starts to look like is, you know, you got back to back like this, and then you got another one and it might be mounted off to the side. So you might have something that looks like that. You might have a strut that's side to side mounted rather than back to back mounted. 
You might have a third one on there that you can, they actually pre-manufacture them like this as well. So there's a whole ton of different options. The reason that you would want the back-to-back, side-to-side, all of that is just because you're looking for like stout rigidity. Some people are putting insanely heavy things mounted to other things. So having a little bit more um, sturdy material back to back just makes this whole structure much more rigid. You might have noticed that there's different color variations of this stuff. What I've got in front of me for Super Strut, well, and for Kendorf, this is Kendorf and this is Super Strut, but they're both in a golden color and we call that gold galv. Um, over here we've got silver galv, so it's a lot more silvery. There is still slight kind of goldish uh, finish to the, to the coating, but it is largely silver and really shiny and really clean. And then we've got pre-galve. So pre-galve is, is still great. It's just that you'll notice on here, you get a little bit of white rust on it if you leave it sit around too long. Um, it doesn't have as much of a clean finish. So if you're looking for something that has a really clean finish, you know, the gold galve or the silver galve are, are not gonna have that same kind of oxidization issue. Now, there are a lot of other colors too. This isn't all that they make. So ABB's got, you know, green coated strut. They've got black strut. They've got uh, stainless strut. So if you're ever doing anything with like water treatment plants, um, where you might have a lot of caustic chemicals or you might have a lot of oxidization or something like that, um, using stainless strut is something that you're going to have to do. And if you work in a lot of food processing facilities where you got like food, you don't want bacteria building up or anything like that, you have to use stainless stuff pretty much for everything in those environments. So they do have stainless. Um, they've also got PVC coated. So like there's just tons and tons of different types of strut that you can get. But the most prevalent that you're probably going to find at Home Depot are going to be these super strut and Kindorf options. So that's pretty much it for the types of strut themselves or the Kindorf. Um, let's talk a little bit about building things or how you build it as a framing system. So there's a few different types of couplings that they make. You can either have couplings that uh, stick to the back of something. So when you mount this to something, you're bolting it on the back, right? That's on the back of it. And then when you wanna add something to it, you just add a piece and it's all on the back of the system. But that is for mounting something on kind of one axis. So everything that we're doing is facing us. We're able to take advantage of putting any kind of, you know, things inside and using the front side of this and using the flat side to mount to. The second option is you have things like this that completely encircle the strut. So for this, this is a footer and I'm gonna make a rack out in my studio. So instead of mounting to a wall, I'm gonna to wanna to put this rack dead center in the middle of the room. So the only way that I can do that is to bolt something in and anchor it to the concrete. So I've got a footer that's standing up. The other thing is, uh, so you saw like this is an L, right? So I'm coming off the side, I'm on the same plane. That leaves the, the open face. That's if I need to do everything on one side, like right in front of it. But what if I needed to mount something to the side? That's where we've got these other L brackets. So say I wanted to come off and mount something over here. You can do that. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you could achieve that, but you could even do you know something like this. So that's it, really, really versatile. As a framing system, it has tons of different options for you to assemble it and put it together. And like I said, I don't even have a tenth of the things that are available for putting this stuff together. And there's, you know, there's even thicker struts. So we're gonna drop some links down in the description below so that you can have a link to go look through their brochures because everything that they make, they have free PDFs that you can just download open to the public so that you can see all the different variations of things that you could buy for the system. So a couple other things that we're gonna talk about is um, for electrical use specifically. All right, so you see a couple of straps here um, and some other like nuts, washers, bolts type of things. First, if we're gonna build something, we need to be able to mount to this. And oftentimes what that means is that we're either using a spring nut or we're using a cone nut. With a spring nut, what you would have to do is you have to compress this nut and slide this in. So it just presses up against the front of the surface. That way when we have a bolt, say we've got like an electrical panel that we just mounted. This is our electrical panel. This goes through, screws into the nut, and as we tighten it, it actually pulls that nut forward even more. So it's really rigid. The only downside that I don't like about spring nuts is as I'm using them, if I need to like move this down a little bit, oftentimes the spring works itself out. And then you're like, oh crap. You know, and if you got like a wall or some stuff behind, you can't get your fingers back there to fix this. So you gotta take everything back apart. 
and it doesn't just it doesn't give you the same versatility to be able to slide and a lot of people end up just cutting the excess off of those but once you do that you lose the spring in the material and it doesn't stay pushed forward anymore so these can be a little bit of a hassle to try to use so what i like to use instead are cone nuts cone nuts slide them on there that's it this thing slides around all day the actual cone holds the nut in place so if i wanted to mount something on super simple i don't even have to worry about that spring back there at all and then if i need to make any adjustments like oh crap my panel needs to be four inches down i measured wrong you just slide it so super nice i love cone nuts use them pretty much exclusively now another thing that's worth talking about is um, putting these in these things are designed as with a slim kind of profile and two rounded corners for a reason so a lot of times you can't actually get to the top or the end of the strut to slide this thing in place sometimes you're just in the middle of it and you need to put it uh, with these spring nuts or cone nuts in so the cool thing with this design is they fit in like this and then you just twist them in place they'll only twist one way that's what those rounded corners are for but boom that locks right in place with a cone nut, sometimes they're a little bit harder just because they have a little bit wider profile, so sometimes you have to like really push them in there. But same thing, just push it down a little bit, twist it, and it's in place, and it still slides. This is what's called a square nut or a square washer. Some people call them nuts, some people call them washers. It's obviously a washer, it's not a nut, it doesn't screw on anything. So the correct thing to say would be a square washer, but I do hear people call them square nuts. Um, so a square washer is something that you would put, let's say you're trying to hang some off down from the ceiling and you want this to hold some conduit that's flying through midair. You would put this through, put a square washer on the bottom, get a lock washer and a nut, put that on there so it holds it from underneath, and then you put another one on the top, put another lock washer and another nut on them. So now you have a very, very stout washer that's holding all of the weight of this together, and you can hang a lot of stuff on these square washers. So um, rather than using like a quarter inch fender washer or something like that, you start putting a, you know, a few hundred pounds on that, boom, those things are just gonna bend and the whole thing's gonna fall. So the square washers allow us as a means of like constructing this with thread that allows us to have some load bearing weight capacity to it. The next one is a trap nut. This is a trap nut. So there is threading on this. If you were to put this around there, the threading actually matches up perfectly, and then you can close this oops, around the thread, and you can adjust it, you can spin it up or down, and then it's got this little pin that locks in. Once you get it where you want it, you just lock that pin in, and now you've got a threaded way to uh, hold weight. Now you can undo these as well, so if you get it on there and you're like, oh crap, it's like four inches low, you just open those jaws a little bit, you can slide it up, slide it down. Um, and if you already have something completely assembled and you're like, crap, I can't get a, a square washer on there because I can't get the top of it to drop the thing down, then uh, you can use something like this because it opens up and it'll just clamp on the side. So I think that um, these things are really awesome. I think you should get them. If you don't use these, they're super helpful. The, the downside is, is that you gotta make sure that it matches the threads of whatever the all thread is. So if you're looking up and you're like, crap, I don't know if that's 5 16 all thread or 3 8 all thread, you gotta make sure that these match, all right? It's size to size match. Um, and then all thread in general, I guess I should probably talk about all thread. All thread is just thread. It's all thread, <laughs> right? All thread in the name. There's no hollowness to it. It is completely threaded all the way through. There's a bunch of different um, sizes of it. You can get like quarter inch, 5 16 3 8 This is 3 8 all thread. Um, but a lot of times this is a good thing to use to suspend things from the ceiling and hold it. And then lastly, we have the different ways to attach conduit. The, what you're typically gonna see is a strut strap. We use these things all day, every day. With these, you put it in sideways and twist them. Put the other one in sideways and twist it. And it actually forms around the conduit. Let me see if you can see that on camera, right? It just secures around the conduit. What you do is put this nut on and twist and boom that holds your conduit in place this is the most common thing that we do you might have multiple of these stacked together which is a little unfortunate because the screws come on the side so sometimes if you were to put you know if you had like multiple pieces of emt here you could see that one strap's going to get in the way of the other strap so it actually becomes really difficult to work with 
when they're mounted from a side like that, which is why I love these things. So these are at an angle. These are called the angler. We've got, I don't know, maybe like a 30 to 45 degree angle. So I can easily get to those screws. If I got a line of like 12 of these things that I'm building together, or if I got a space and I need to fill that space with a new piece of conduit, you just slide this thing in. You don't have to worry about it all day long. It gives you a little bit of adjustability either way, but that just that having that angled is so incredibly helpful. So I love these things. Now, the last one that I think is um, really worth like going out and buying, I think that you'll see the benefit of it once I get this off. Look how long this takes me. So if you're on a job site and you got like 300 of these to do in a day, it is going to take you all day to do all 300. Probably takes, you know, 15, 30 seconds per to stick these things on. Check this thing out. You want to talk about time savings? So this hooks on the side. You can get a 7 16 for your drill. Bop, that's already on there. That took me no time. Take it off and just unscrew it. Take it off. I love these things. It's even nice because if you do a lot of conduit and they're side by sides and you're doing like rows of conduit, it screws from the top. So you can put these things super close together. Um, you can, you know, be, like beautifully space everything. You don't have to worry about any of the screws from the side or anything like that. It all comes from the top. And if you have to make any kind of adjustments, you literally just pop that loose, slide it, pop it back. That's <laughs> so nice. I think that's the coolest strap that I've found. Uh, in the whole system. I just love that. So now this is just one use case. This is one thing that I built that had one use to it, but there's tons of different uses to this. So if, for instance, um, if I wanted to mount this straight to a wall instead of having a rack in the middle of the room, it doesn't have holes that are 16 inch on center. So I couldn't really mount it to those studs. So one thing I could do is just mount this right here and then hang the panel on that. Um, another thing I could have done is like, say I wanted to hang this transformer up in the ceiling and I didn't want to sit here and have to trip over it. I could just put some strut on the bottom of it and I could have hung some all thread from the ceiling and then lifted this thing up with a lift and suspended it in the ceiling. So it's kind of like a Lego system. Like really you can build anything that you want, whatever you can think of. And it's such a versatile framing system that there's really not a lot of limitations to it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you got something out of that. I'll see you crazies in the next one.